Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the Ella Shepherd School of Music, what you're doing for kids uh, up in Chicago. Well, the first thing was, um, you know, Fisk has always had, we've always made teachers here. Mm -hmm. Even at the very beginnings of Fisk, with people like um, Maggie Porter mm -hmm. and um, Benjamin Holmes, who were part of the original troupe of Julie Singers, right, right. they were out in the countryside teaching people what little stuff they knew, how mm -hmm. to read. and and they're getting their houses burned, getting their schoolhouses burned down by the Klan. So they, mm -hmm. we, Fiskites have always been doing this. They've always taken what they've learned and, and brought it to the world. Well, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, after I got out of Fisk and I started getting into bands and songwriting, I, uh, I had a career as a songwriter and in a band. Uh, we had a couple of record deals and didn't get any big hits. Although I wrote some great songs. I wrote mm -hmm. great songs, I can tell you. Um, nice. Maybe we can after, huh? have videos we can show. Oh uh, yeah, there's some stuff on YouTube. I'm still not getting paid for. But anyway, <laughs> so coming around, uh, I moved to California, and that was the first place where uh, I really started teaching. I got um, I got in touch with a lady named Sharon Shahid, and she had um, a piano play music systems. And I I called I actually called her husband to try to get put on her husband a fantastic trumpeter. And he's like got the, the key to all the gigs. So I need a gig. I'm in California. And I call her husband. And he says, oh, Cat Daddy, you know, uh, <laughs> I got a keyboard player, but uh, I can't use one. But my wife just got a, uh, has a music school, but she's got like, she just hired four teachers. I'm like, well, she's going to have to fire one of them. <laughs> but I need a job. So I, I call her and I lay it on thick. Yeah, I studied at Fisk and I studied with Matthew Kennedy and I play all this piano. So she said, oh, that's fine. You want to ask me anything? So I said, yeah, you know, um, how many students do you have? She said, well, we got a school of about 500 students. I said, this man gave me his wife's number. She's crazy. Who 500 students? Because my experience with piano is I go in with my teacher one-on-one. -on -one, right. Like, how can you teach 500 people? So I said, okay, well, and I, what age do you start? And, you know, generally four years old is pretty, start, pretty early. She said, well, I have a class called... Tiny fingers, and they start the kids at 19 months. I said, this woman is crazy. So I go over to this place, and it's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. Wow. Class piano. She's teaching kids. She's got all these techniques for teaching kids how to be music literate early on. So I just totally bought in. I, uh, start, I had to do an orientation with her for about six weeks, and then she let me loose in the classroom. So I started teaching kids as early as 19 months and as late as you know 14 years old. So. I was out there and I said, well, you know, she would, she would get kids from the early stages up to intermediate piano and then switch them into a private lesson. So I'm, I'm like, well, you know, you can get to more kids if you can keep this classroom thing going. Mm -hmm. So we started, I, I said, let's start to develop an intermediate course. Mm -hmm. And right then my parents got sick. Oh. So I moved back to Chicago to help take care of my parents. So now I don't, uh, I don't really want to play in the clubs because I want to be around. And I've got this teaching experience. So I started doing more teaching. I got into the public school system. And I was frustrated because the Chicago public school system does not value arts education. Mm -hmm. But the kids in my neighborhood need art education. Right. Because what I found in California is that the earlier you start kids with arts education, especially piano, the better it is for their cognitive development. Right. Which means right. music makes kids smart. Exactly. So my kids are struggling at age eight in the classroom, which, which goes on to high school. And they're not excelling in academic situations because they're getting ousted from the things that are going to make them smarter earlier. So I'm like, OK, I've got to try to combat this thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, like, you, like I heard this, the story of Ella Shepard, I really got it. So Ella Shepard was a teacher. Right. She was the first black teacher at Fisk. Right. You know, so that was a natural thing. I'm going to start a music school. I'm going to name it after Ella Shepard. Mm -hmm. So I left the Chicago public school system, and I'm going to start a music school. And they said, well, my friend said, well, you got some money? I said, no. <laughs> so I'm going to start a music school. They said, well, you got a place to go? I said, no. I'm going to start a music school. So I started beating the street and looking at the stuff, and I'm like, I can't afford any of this stuff. And finally, one of my um, Fisk guy's friends said, Go talk to Tamara. And Tamara Fair is a young lady who's an entrepreneur in Chicago. She's, 
She's got a lot of daycare centers, child development centers. And I've known her, we all went to school together. And so after, after some prodding, I finally went over to Tamara's place. And she had this big, huge three-story building on the west side, right in my neighborhood. So I went upstairs and I said, well, this is my friend, but I gotta talk to her, you know, business. And if anybody knows Tamara, she's, she's like the multitask queen of the world. So she's on the phone, buy, sell, what? <laughs> so she stops that and she says, Gio, go in the back and pick out a room for your school. Oh, fantastic. And that's how it got started. Wow. And I've been over there. So when I came back, she said, here's the key to the front door, key to the back door. Here's the code to the thing. Don't leave my lights on and do whatever you're going to do. So that was November of 2009. And this year is our 10th year. And usually my classrooms are 20 kids between the ages of three to five. And then I, the, the two-year-old class said, well, we're getting music too. So I said, okay. So <laughs> I said, the two, two-year-olds too. And so that's four classes of kids, 20. And so it ended up being like about um, 120 kids a year for the last 10 years. So uh, over 1,000 kids. Wow. And not one has paid for a lesson. Wow. Yeah. And as you see, I haven't missed any meals. <laughs> <laughs>